advice about what to do with your money can sometimes seem a little daunting, confusing, or just not what you think you need. Yeah, so today our money expert is here to dispel some financial advice myths. Bruce Elmer joins us now. Bruce, good morning. Good morning. I like this idea. We're looking at myths, and I think that there's probably a lot of them out there when it comes to finances. There really are, and a lot of the myths, you know, you, you got to remember that Wall Street and, uh, and New York and uh, financial services companies maybe have motivations to want consumers to do things, mm. and maybe sometimes those things are good for Wall Street, but are they really good for you? So let's start with myth number one. My finances are pretty simple. I can do it by myself. A lot of people feel this way. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of people watching this morning that are do-it-yourselfers sure. when it comes to their mm -hmm. personal finance. The example I give, I've, I've, I've been in this industry over 30 years. I've been doing a radio show for 20 years. I still get questions very consistently that I don't know the answer to. Mm. So if there's so many things that I don't know, how does an individual that's not in the industry, mm. not spending as much time, know everything? I tell people, you don't even know what you don't know. Number two, financial advisors only help with investing. Investing is the sexy part, the glamorous yeah, part. What's that's the what rate you would of think of. What's the rate of return on my stocks or my <laughs> mutual funds or my 401k? But comprehensive financial planning is so much more than that. The, the investing or the accumulation is one third of comprehensive planning. Then someday you're going to retire and you're going to take distributions, retirement income planning, taking your withdrawals efficiently and effectively. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the last phase, when you leave this world, presumably you don't spend your last dollar the day, day you take your last breath. Mm -hmm. Where do you want what's left to go? How do you get it there efficiently and effectively? Financial advisors can help in all those areas. Myth number three, financial advisors don't provide any value. And I think this goes to the idea of uh, this fear that we have that the advisors are making recommendations just That's to good get for them. So their best money. commission. Yeah, right. and, and you know, there's been bad behavior on Wall Street, and so certainly trustworthiness of financial advisors is an issue, and also the, the value issue. Maybe, maybe you find an advisor that you think is honest, and it's not that they don't add any value, but do they add enough value to justify their fee? Sure. And I tell people all the time, if after a recent period of time, I can't quantify and demonstrate to you that net-net you're better off with us than without us, you should fire us. And I mm. think a good advisor can demonstrate that they are value-added, sometimes in a very quantifiable way, sometimes maybe not so quantifiable, but in a way that people can see. That fee is, I think, what leads to myth number four. Financial advisors are only for the extremely wealthy. Um, there are um, there's a mountain of evidence out there that people that engage financial advisors do better than those that don't net of cost. And mm. it doesn't matter how much money you have or you don't have. In fact, it's, it's a testament to the value of financial advisors that the extremely wealthy, we know, use a team of financial advisors. Bill Gates and Warren Buffett don't do this all by themselves. They get professional people to help them. But so can anybody get that same kind of advice. You don't have to be wealthy to benefit from a good advisor. Good stuff. Okay. Bruce, thank you. Thank, you. thank, thank you. you. You can see Bruce right here on Mid Morning each Tuesday and get more financial advice on his show, Your Money, on WCCO Radio. Tune in Sunday mornings from 8.30 to 9.30.